Welcome back. Now, I know I've been missing for quite a while. I've had lots of other things going on in my life. I've moved jobs. I have uh, wasn't able to film on the site that I was working at. So I've been coming up with some ideas of little things that I can do. Now, I had my virtual gas safe uh, assessment earlier on this week on Monday, and it was a little bit more harder than I thought it was going to be. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't, didn't fail it. I, I, ma I managed to pass it. But there was a few things that sort of caught me, caught me out, and I thought maybe be a good idea to go over some of the unsafe situations now everything that i'm going to be reading from is from the igem g11 that we all should be carrying now i have copies on my phone and i also printed out a version as well just to be able to keep it in my van with me so i think that's a good good starting point to go down i can send you the link for it i probably will put that link in the description so you can download that yourself now number one i'm going to start with will be down to CO alarms. So a CO alarm activation. Now there are bullet points. It all comes on the page ready to go. So I think this will be a good starting point for everyone to, to go down. If you're called to a CO alarm activation, what should you do? Okay, now I'm literally going to read this from the IGM G11 that I've followed it out. It's section five, investigation process. So section five, investigation process. So number one, it says on there, uh, do, do not, not undertake any gas work where somebody has been unconscious or has died from CO poisoning. Okay, so that is number one. So you literally leave it as it is. There's nothing else that you need to do. Report any situations uh, which meet requirements to riddle. So that is another section, which is section eight in the book. You established that somebody hasn't died and that you're just being called out to an activation of a CO alarm. So first things first, you need to undertake a gas tightness test to rule out gas escape that is your first rule that you need to follow that is your first port of call to do so isolate the gas go and do your tightness test make sure there's no no gas leaks so you can rule that one out it says on there that you have to test appliances in the condition that you found them so don't you know literally just run run the boiler run the cooker that's usually uh, cookers I found are usually the issues that I've that I've come across so that it, it can be a poor flame inside the, the actual cooker itself poor hobs whatever it is it could just be, literally be down to an injector being blocked for instance so that is the next one down it says have an appropriate level of understanding of combustion likely sources CO from from all fuels CO movement in properties and and the effects of CO right now this one, I had this in a job in Tottenham. I had a customer calling up because their CO alarm had activated a few times uh, when they weren't cooking. So, okay, fine, right. We can kind of rule out your property, but obviously I'll do my tightness test first. Then we need to move on to the next port of call. Now it's in a block of flats, uh, quite an old block. And what I found was that it was actually traveling from other people's, uh, from another person's flat uh, neighboring and coming through and affecting their CO alarm. That person didn't actually have a CO alarm, so they, you know, very lucky there to be to be completely honest that the other person next door did have a CO alarm. So it just goes to show the ingress of CO can affect other properties as well. That's a good thing to uh, to bear in mind. One along, it says that you have to have a good understanding of the correct standard and location of where the CO alarm is meant to be from the manufacturer's instructions. So that is just going to be a case of when you are putting in a new CO alarm read the instructions where does, where do they want it to be located that is that is it really uh, that's not a big one but there are people put them on top of fridges they put them in different places um, and stuff like that but always go by the manufacturer's instructions same as all boilers as well manufacturer's instructions as always have the appropriate competencies and your um, certificates to be able to work on say number one a, a boiler uh, cooker fire whatever's in that property you need to have the tickets for so you have to have the the, the appropriate competency competencies it says um, and obviously then you're going to need to have your certificates as well that you can actually do that properly along you have to be equipped to undertake the following checks on the on the gas appliances so the effectiveness of any flu so it'd be a flu integrity and obviously checking your combustion analysis as well through that supply of combustion here i've just answered that one operating pressure or heat input so that's going to be your gas rating um, uh, when necessary or both so operating pressure or um, heat input i would always probably try and get both if you can if you can if the if the meter is accessible etc 
Uh, combustion performance, obviously I've just gone over that, that's what our analyzer is going to have to be. It's going to have to be calibrated and you're going to have to have your certificates for that as well. Uh, operating Operation to ensure it's safe functioning. So with a combi boiler, for most new boilers, a lot's going to have to go wrong because they are room sealed. So it's going to be quite a bad problem for it to start seeping out into the room and causing a real issue. But obviously, you know, check it, doing all your checks as well, your, your, your door seal, your any grommets that are missing, you don't want somebody to go in there after you and see something that you've you've missed. Easily done, well aware of that. Um, but I've seen it before where a flu cap's been left off, CO alarm's gone off, and I'll I'll, I'll go and attend, and it's been left off. You know, it does these things do happen because we are all human at the end of the day, and our minds can be taken away. Um, but with that, I always have a set routine that I do every single time, and I do not deviate from that. Even if the customer is talking to me, I'll politely say to them, just bear with me for a minute while I while I finish off my check. So with my analyzer, obviously pull it out, make sure you put that gas, uh, sorry, that uh, plug back on and make sure that you're okay there. So yeah, next one. It says about using your, uh, it's got to be calibrated for combustion analysis. That's the next one along, I've covered that one. Um, and then it says act in accordance with iGEM G11. So whatever, whatever situation that you find yourself in, wh whether it's a uh, flu, whatever it is, that's when your iGEM G11 is going to want to come into play after that. That's where you're going to need to have your booklet and say, I printed it all out, have your booklet, and uh, then you can go through it, go through it on your phone, find whatever scenario it is that you need to do. And we'll move on to the next one. Is that you have to issue a record to the duty holder, responsible person on site, whoever it is, uh, tenant, landlord, customer, um, wh whoever's on site at that time, you need to be able to give them a record of what you've done so you know that's that's what your last port of call is so it's pretty in order really of what you need to do so that's that's how i would always play it is i would just cop literally just follow this this is all in that igmg 11 as well i'll put a link down down below so you can you can download that for yourself and i think uh, this is a good one to start with and then we can move on to the actual different situations the scenarios and i'll be doing them going forward. I hope this video was of any use. Um, I loved the amount of people that got back to me on TikTok, um, Instagram and YouTube. I had a great response and I think it's a great one that we can all talk about. This is what comment sections are for. I'm not right, I'm not wrong. I'm just say, stay, stating the facts and I think comment sections are brilliant. I think it's a good way that we can all communicate and that we can, we can move on from there and try and clear up any grey areas because there are lots and lots of grey areas, as we all know. People may think one thing, but the actual industry standard is a, is a different, and that's what I found out when I was doing this uh, doing this assessment. It wasn't, as I say, it wasn't the hardest thing in the world, but it did take me a lot longer than other people had said. People have said it only takes around about 20 minutes, well over an hour for myself. Whether I just process things differently or you know think a little bit more deeply, I don't know. Um, but it just took me a lot longer than, than I anticipated. So that one there, I think that's a good one to start with and we'll move on to the rest.